Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we will have a look at Cameron Buchan from the UK, Scottish guy. Pro Rower has his own YouTube channel. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. And he's a pro rower and fell into the water during a race. And he was not too shy to talk about it. And that's something I admire a lot. Thank you, Cameron, because a lot of rowers capsize, but many are ashamed and there's no reason to be. In this video, I would love to talk about why I think this happened and how to avoid it. It happened in Italy, in Pireluco, and that's where Cameron faced rough weather. As you can see by the footage, this is pretty choppy weather. It's not easy to race in that. And although it may appear to be flat, it isn't. Cameron has issues to use his full physical capacity. The question is, why is it so difficult to row in these conditions? Well, first of all, you're pretty close to the water. If you're new to rowing, there's not much space you've got. But there's a second reason. Let's just, just analyze what happens. So here at the finish, you can see, Cameron, your shoulders are pretty off. Your left is much higher than your right. So you're trying to compensate that left over right thing with a shoulder motion. It may be just the choppy conditions. Let's check the next finish. Again, you're, you're doing a shoulder motion that is, you try to compensate the overlap by rowing that way. So that twists the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle should rest pretty much natural. And the way you do it is that way. It's a tiny bit of motion. It's not that. You're twisting the entire trunk also here at the finish. And that makes things very difficult. Another difficulty is here at the finish, you don't get enough clearance. The blades simply don't have enough clearance to the water. But that simply is not not is not that simple at all. And I'll explain what, later why it is not that easy at all. I think Cameron, in your, in your situation, you've done your very best to struggle through that race somehow. Beautiful, beautiful place, by the way. And you can see during the recovery, his left oar hits a wave, boom. You can see how high these waves were, pretty uncomfortable. The right, the right side is fairly clear, the left one isn't. I wonder how much overlap do you have left to right? What's, what's the distance? And you can see, you barely on the left, the left blade touches the water, there's not enough space, you have to go down. This is where you have to balance the boat now, just to be able to square. Then you get the blades into the water, you already start to drive, and I think this is the reason why you're capsized. You already start to drive before the blades are ready. And there's another thing. The way you start the stroke is with a body upward motion. So the body moves up, that brings the hands up, brings the blades down. So there is no real blade connection phase. Let's say this little battery pack with a blade. So if you go, to, no matter how rough the conditions are, there's always a time of, of place connect start to drive. If you square, wait, boom, start to drive and smack the water, there is no way to stabilize in rough conditions. And there's a good reason, Cameron, why I think that you're stabilizing. Or, yeah, through the drive. You see this, how the, how the body twists? Your body adapts to the water conditions and that shouldn't be the case. Your body should be the anchor of stability. Of course, there is always a, that is not 100% possible. I'm well aware of this. But the thing is, you, you don't have your hands under control. You don't have your oars under control as much as you should. It's the other way around. The oars have a lot of impact over your body stability. And I think this needs to be reversed. As you go forward, this is where the problem starts. I know this is a race situation. It's mean to, to analyze somebody's technique during a race. Because you could analyze my technique, it would suck during a race. Excuse my word, but that's, that's a fact. But nevertheless, this is where we need technique the most. So I might as well do it. And th the issue is here. There's no, there's no serious pelvic rotation forward. And I cannot see your legs. There's no side shot, but based on the tension you've got, 
I'm almost 100% sure that your knees break very early. There's not that rock over with your pelvis that allows you to keep most of the body weight on the seat and therefore have light hands or hands that are in control of the situation. The thing is that the catch, you should be able to let go of your oars anytime you want. Of course, nobody does it because you can capsize, but you shouldn't need your blades to stabilize your trunk. You should be able to stabilize your trunk with your with a pelvic roll. And that has to happen during the transition from finished posture to hands away. The first thing, keep tension in your quads. That allows you to keep connection to the foot stretchers. So you are still in control over the entire boat. Second, when you move forward, make sure it's your hands that clear the body, but then it's your pelvis that rotates the entire trunk from the hip bone on, from the hip joints on forward. It doesn't have to be a lot, but that changes the way you load. If that were a seat now, you would actually now sit on a center to front, more center front, but certainly not rear to center. The thing is, if you sit that way, you're pretty hunched and round, and then you, you don't have, you, you're, half of your trunk is on your seat, the other half is kind of stabilized by the small muscles right here. And that makes your trunk very tired. And especially in rough conditions like these, it is almost impossible to stabilize the single. And that's why many people, if you ask them, hey, just get your blades off the water, it isn't that easy. The reason why it's not easy is because if you don't support your own trunk weight with your seat, but you actually support your trunk weight to, to a large extent with your handles, then you've got the issue that you need the oar handles, namely the full oars, to be in a very stable position all the time. That's okay if you've got perfectly flat water, but what if you don't? And what if you don't is now a standard? I don't know many regatta places that actually have good weather. Any wave that comes offsets you, and you can see this, boom. Now you start to drive and you have to hope that you have about even conditions left and right the moment your blades hit the water. The way you do it, blade sits in the air and then you smack the water. Why does it sit in the air? That's right here the case. Go back, go forward, boom. And that face, that face right there, that is maybe a bad example because it's, it's really rough right now, but it takes a lot of time because there's a lot of things to do. What's to do is mostly to do with shifting weight. Shifting weight from the oar handles onto the seat. You cannot hold on to something and push it forward and the very next moment be loose, relaxed and start to pull on it. And you can try this out with the door handle. You can't really hold on to it and push it forward, disintegrate your upper body stability and then try to be super stable, loose, relaxed and elegantly pull on that. It is impossible. That takes time. You need to rearrange everything. Now, in a race situation or any situation, there's not much time at the cache. So what do you do? You skip a couple of steps. And one of the most important steps that has been skipped here is preparing the blade, put it as close to the water as possible, make sure the body is ready to do the drive, put it in the water, still be independent because most of your seat is on the most of your weight is on the seat. Do that. Of course, nobody does it elegantly as a swan in back conditions like these but at least you're not so susceptible to waves. Cameron and I were messaging on Instagram a bit and said, yeah, he's aware of his, his, his blade control is not as good. He should have, should use more clearance. Absolutely, but how do you get it? Shifting weight all the time. You, your, your weight's gonna be in a seat. I, I, I think that's one of the most important things. And I see this with, with many top athletes. And this is, I think that this is where you almost capsized, but you didn't. One more thing, and capsizing could have happened now as well. You see this? You can, you, you fetter in the water. Why? Because you rely on your oars to grant your stability. They don't. So you fetter in the water. This is how you catch a crab. 
you have to be able at the finish to hold it and at least get the blades out a bit and don't you, you shouldn't hold on to the oars to help you stabilize your trunk uh, that's where you bring your chest out and make sure you sit on the seat or can you still connect to the foot stretchers and you need to have quad tension to stay connected and then you push down feather as much as possible when your hands go forward you catch a you catch a crab catch a wave doesn't matter you can shake it off you can give way right hand continues to go forward give way catch up again if your weight doesn't rely on your oar handles you're all good to go but if your weight does rely on your oar handles this is what happens the blade wasn't properly squared and at the same time Cameron I think the, the blade is either not properly squared or you you caught a wave and the wave gave you way more resistance on the lift and your right blade was not anywhere close to the water because you were about to push down to square and now you completely or no you start to miss a bit of water on the right side and as your weight is most is you, you still rely a lot on your oar handles to stabilize you because you see that part here that's pretty round and hunched there's not much stability I've done a lot of video analysis and I've coached a lot of people and when it when a back looks like this from the, from the rear it's very likely to be round this is when the low trunk shows points backwards and then there's that hunch and round back and that's the case here as well and this is why you're pretty much instable at least I believe that this is the case and therefore your left hand you your left or goes deeper and deeper and deeper I, I don't think you square properly and because you square too late or something like that maybe correct me if I'm wrong Cameron and the right blade then over squared because here it was squared properly but then it over somewhat washed out over squared you lost grip completely on the right and this is how you how you lost balance The thing is, during a drive situation, once the blades are locked in the water, you rely 100% on them giving you stability during the drive, once they're locked in the water. But that requires you squaring the blades, putting them in the water, but having a slow, a slow, consistent catch buildup. And that requires you to stabilizing the blades first before you start the drive. If you wait in the air, skip the step of placing because there's too much weight on your on your hands and then you just start to drive that makes the upper body hunched that rotates your pelvis backwards and then your blades smack the water with with everything being in full motion full sweep there's a lot of impact and a lot of impact has has the habit to destabilize things even more especially in rough conditions and that's the case Nevertheless, I mean, Cameron has an exceptionally good technique, but this is something that can happen to many, to, to a lot of athletes. This is nothing uh, saying, ha ha, Cameron fell into the water. <laughs> I fell in the water the first time when I tried to impress somebody else. I mean, how stupid can it possibly be? It happened right in front of the dock of, uh, of a big rowing club. I tried to, to push a power tin, try to look really cool the next moment I fell into the water because I forgot to close the oar lock properly. Beginner's mistake. I had been racing the thing for three years. I mean, how silly can you be? Very silly, as it turned out. But Cameron, he probably closed everything perfectly properly, just caught a crowd. So these things happen. There are two, three important messages. The first message is, thank you, Cameron, for sharing this. It helps a lot of people say, oh, wow, even Cameron fell into the water. If I do, nothing bad. Second, stability is the key and body weight transition is the key to get your blades off the water. You cannot just put your blades off the water. First of all, you need to make sure there's not much load on them, vertical load. Point number three, blade work is the utmost importance in rowing, not for beauty, but for your capacity to unfold your full 
potential. If your blade work is not perfect and you strive for perfect blade work at any given moment, you may make it far, but it's going to be much harder. Yeah, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Share this video if you like it, give it a like or a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have already capsized because many other people then realize how oh, I'm not the only one and Cameron is not the only one as well. See you in the next video. Thank you very much. Go to rmtraining.com to work with me and I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.